Okay, today I'm going to show you how to take your comment data and animate it using Cyril. In my last video, I showed you how to stack the comment data using Cyril. And full disclosure, the first 11 minutes of this video are direct copy and paste of footage into this one because all those steps need to be done just like we did last time when we were stacking the photos. I thought about just doing a quick video and telling everybody to refer back to that one, but I really wanted this to be an end-to-end, -end, step by step. Here's how to animate your, your comment data. So that's what I did. So if you've watched the last video, the first 11 minutes may be boring to you and you're gonna notice that they're, it's exactly the same, but it needs to be. At the 11 minute mark, that's when we get into the animation steps. So let's get to it. This is a fun one, guys. My name is Rich and you're watching Deep Space Astro. Alright, so running version 1.0.6 is zero. Before we get started, just want to show you where I have all my lights and calibration frames right off my C drive, folder called Astrophotography, and then one called Comet. I have my biases, darks, flats, and lights. As I've mentioned in previous videos, you need to have these four folder structures named this way for the script to work correctly. I'm also going to create a new folder in here just called new files. You can create it whatever you want. It's just a place to store the new files as we go through. It makes it easier to find them when we're done. So we'll minimize that. We're gonna hit our home button and select our comet folder and click open and then come up to scripts and OSC pre-processing. So we'll let this run over here and once it's done stacking, we'll get started. Okay, our stacking is complete. This is the point usually when you're running Cyril for a normal session of a nebula or galaxy that we would come over to open and we would open our result.fit file. We're not going to do that for the comet, but I am going to jump back over here to my folder structure to show you the new process directory. And this is always created. We generally don't worry about it when we're just doing a nebula session. And it is filled with our biases and our stack biases and dark and stack darks and just a ton of files in here so this is the folder we're going to be working in today so we need to change our home directory in Cyril so we're back up to the blue house button here and we're gonna double click on process and click on open the next step is we're gonna come over here to sequence and then you want to hit the blue search sequences button and what we're looking for is pp underscore light underscore dot seq select that and then we're going to come down and take our view out of linear put it in auto stretch and we can jump real quick over on the rgp this is showing us our first file within the sequence as you can see in the top right corner here again most things that you do in serial you can't do them on the rgb tab you have to be on one of the color channels so i'm going to work on green and the first thing that we're going to do with the files in our sequence is run a background extraction so image processing background extraction we're going to change our interpolation method and the degree order from four to one. These are the two settings that Cyril recommends. And if you deviate from these two at all, you'll get a pop-up message warning you that you don't need to be that aggressive with your settings and that this is what they recommend to run a background extraction with. So samples per line, I've got a 20. Grid tolerance, I'm gonna bump that up to four. And we're gonna click generate. Make sure we got good coverage of samples all the way around. And I am just going to right click on these samples around the comet just to remove them so it doesn't interfere with any of the coma or anything else around the comet itself. I don't want that to be determined to be the background. Once that's done, we can hit compute background. And before we apply it, we're going to tick this box down here that says apply to sequence. Prefix, you can leave it the default, bkg underscore. This is simply going to be all of the files with the background extraction applied. New ones will be created with that prefix, and we'll see that here in a few minutes. So go ahead and click apply, and you can watch down on the bottom here as it's going through and doing a background extraction on every image within our PP light sequence. Okay, so background extraction has completed. Up in your sequence name here, you see it changed from the PP light to the BKG PP light. So it selected the new sequence that it just created where it applied all the background extractions to the files. So ensure that you're on the correct sequence 
If you're not, you can just click the pull down menu and, and select the BKG file. Now we need to set a reference frame. So we're gonna come over and click on open frame list. The default reference frame is number one. Reference image is checked up here. The reference frame is basically just how you want the comet framed when, is, when we're at the final process for it. I have 60 frames here. So I am just gonna pick one in the middle, which would be 30 and then come up here and tick reference image. And then we can close the frame list box. Now we're gonna do a photometric calibration. Um, when I do the color calibrations, I like to sit on the RGB tab so I can see more of a visual, the change as it occurs. We're going to apply background calibration to our reference image that we have open right here. The thing is, is we're viewing this file through our sequence right now. So if I was to come up and say image processing, color calibration, you can see both of these options are grayed out. And that's why, it's because we're viewing this within the sequence. So we actually need to open file number 30. So we're gonna go to open, make sure we're in our process directory. And like I said before, there's a ton of files in here, so make sure you select the right one. You can always use the file name up here in the top right corner as your reference. So we're looking for BKG, PP, Light, and 30. That's it right there. So we'll go ahead and open that. Now when we come over to image processing, color calibration, our two options are available to us again. So we're gonna do a photometric color calibration and this, you need, you need your right ascension and declination coordinates. And this depends on what you're shooting with. If you have a dedicated astronomy camera and uh, those coordinates have been stored in that file, then you should simply be able to click get metadata from images and this will be populated for you. In my case, I shot with my Canon mirrorless and the same thing would happen with a DSLR. You probably won't have those coordinates in the files, so you're going to have to go find them yourselves. The, there's a new there's numerous ways to do this i usually use stellarium but there's some configuration you need you need to do with stellarium in order to be able to locate the comet and i know not everybody uses stellarium so i'm going to show you guys a way that everybody can use without needing to install software or configure software and that is an online planetarium called the skylive.com so I'll leave the link down in the description. Once you're up on this page, just where it says locate object, we're gonna put in the comment. So C0 or C2022 B3 ZTF. There's the comment we're after now. And it shows it to us in the sky, but this is today at the time of the recording where the comment currently is at. We need to get the RA and deck coordinates from the night in time when I shot my images. So the way I do that is come back into my lights folder and just look at the timestamps that are on each of the files. So you can see here, we'll just go with the first one. You don't have to, you know, over an hour, the sky didn't move that much. So we're going to go with February 3rd at 10 o'clock. So back over to the sky.com and click your little clock icon here and then change your date and time. So February 3rd at 10 o'clock p.m. All right, so now our date and time matches the timestamp on our light file. And what we're after here is the second line here where it says right ascension and declination. So the first one we need is right ascension, which is five hours and 30 minutes. So back into Cyril, five hours and 30 minutes. And now we need to get the declination, which is 58 degrees and 18 minutes. Make sure your focal distance and your pixel size is correct or close enough. Mine, these numbers will work, but to be exact, 250 my focal length because I shot this with the Red Cat, and my pixel size is 3.72. Rest of the stuff you could just leave at the defaults and click OK. A console window will come back up as it's doing the calibration for you, and on the bottom here it says that it's been applied. Click close and very important step when this is complete and I say very important because 
the numerous times that I ran through this process, this was the step that I kept forgetting to do, but you wanna make sure you come over here in the top right and click your save button. So it'll save that color calibration to our reference image that we have open. If you don't do that, then things are gonna start going sideways with the next steps that we go through. Because again, this is our reference image, right? This is what it'll be looking at for everything else. Okay, now we're going back over to our sequence tab and you can see our sequence. There's nothing in our sequence field and that's because we opened this number 30 file directly. So it cleared the sequence. So just click anywhere in this pull down and we want to reselect our background PP light sequence. Once that opens, verify in the top right corner that our reference image is still open. Okay, next step, we're going over to our registration tab. Make sure your registration method is global star alignment. Everything else remains the same. These are your defaults and just click go register. Okay, registration is complete. We're gonna go back to our sequence. You can see it changed once more. Same, same sequence name we had before, but now it's prefixed with an R underscore for registered. The one thing the registration does is it will determine what it thinks should be the best reference file, which in normal circumstances is what you want. But in our case, doing the comet stacking and the star stacking, we want to make sure our reference image is the one being used, the one that we chose. So you can see here in the top right corner, number 30 is no longer the reference image. It's number one. So we want to set that back. So back over to open frame list, scroll down to 30. And again, tick the reference image box up on the top. Now we'll see our change reflected up here. We have our sequence opened and our reference image is file number 30. All right, make sure you're on one of your color channels. I'm on green. I'm gonna set a crop for this because I don't want a full screen animation like this since the comment is not going through the entire image that we have here. So uh, I'm gonna right click and say selection and come down here to four thirds and then just draw a box just eyeball it i know it moves from this position down this way so i'll kind of center it that way have it move through the center of the screen i'm only dealing with 60 frames so we're only get about a five to six second animation out of this so once you have your crop the way that you want it come over here to your base name and you can call this whatever you like I'm going to call mine Comet Animation. Tick on Normalize Images. Make sure you're set to Fits Images over here in the pull down. And we're going to export the sequence. It's prompting us about our crop that we have in place, and we're going to confirm that. And it'll apply that crop to all the images within this sequence. You can see down the bottom it's computing normalization. We'll give that a few minutes for it to wrap up. Okay, sequence export succeeded. We're going to click search sequences so we get our new sequence loaded. And there it is right there, comment animation underscore dot seq. I'm going to click on that. Come down to our auto stretch view and put that back into linear. And your top bar over here on the bottom, you want to make sure you have that slid all the way over to 65,535. And click on the RGB tab and then come down to our histogram toolbox. We're going to do the auto apply first and if you use your plus button here to zoom in so you can see what you're doing just make some adjustments because this is the only time you're going to be able to make any adjustments to your to your images which will be stacked into the animation we're not going to be able to pull it out in the photoshop like we did in the previous video so just play around with your sliders until you get it to where you like it when you're happy with your results tick on apply to sequence and then click the apply button it's doing its thing down here in the bottom and it's finished now with the same sequence opened we're going to come here where it says fits image and you can do avi or mp4 264 or 265 i'm going to do mp4 we can uncheck normalize images because that's not going to help us any longer and our fps frames per second like i said i've got 60 frames so that would be like two seconds I am going to change it to 12, so it'll give me five seconds. And then our last step is just hit export sequence. Keep an eye on it in the bottom here as it's going through our fits and then it'll compile our MP4 for us. And we'll take a look and see what we ended up with. Sequence exported succeeded. 
So we'll come back over into our process directory. That's where it's going to create it. And if we scroll down, there it is, cometanimation.mp4. I'm going to just double click it and see what we ended up with. Here's our comet shooting across the sky. So pretty cool, huh? I mean, it's awesome to take a picture of something in space. I think it's just over the top to have a video of something that you took in space. Hopefully you guys have a lot better data than I did. As you can tell, there wasn't a lot of detail in that. There wasn't a lot of color. I had a, almost a full moon that night when I was shooting, as I mentioned before. So it washed a lot of stuff out. You couldn't see the tail, but it's still super fun to do. You can use this for any of your common images. Uh, hope you found it useful. If you liked the video, give it a like, leave a comment. If you're not a subscriber, consider subscribing. I'd appreciate it. And until next time, we'll see you in the next video. Clear skies.